Did you know this is the closest country to the sun? Hello and welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're taking a look at the beautiful land of Ecuador. Join us and stay to the end to find out about the city basking under the equatorial sun. This relatively small South American country straddles the equator and contains snow-capped volcanic peaks, the Amazon rainforest, tropical coasts, and the Galapagos Islands all within its borders. Ecuador has three main geographic zones, the Andes mountain range through the center, coastal lowlands along the Pacific Ocean, and the Amazon Basin rainforest region in the south and east. The Andes mountains have two parallel ranges with tall, active volcanoes, like the tallest peak of Chimborazo at over 20,500 feet high. Major cities like Quito, the capital, and Cuenca are located in mountain valleys and plateaus with cooler climates good for growing crops. Due to its location near the equator and high altitude, Quito is often referred to as the City of Eternal Spring and is considered one of the cities closest to the sun in the world. The coastal region in western Ecuador has a hot, tropical climate, perfect for exporting Ecuadorian crops like bananas, cocoa and coffee. Port cities like Guayaquil, the largest city Machala and Manta, are important coastal hubs of trade and commerce. Nearly half of Ecuador's territory is Amazon rainforest, or Upper Amazon jungle, with incredibly diverse plant and animal life. In the Amazon region, major cities are limited due to the remote jungle terrain, but Puyo and Macas are important for east-west travel across the country. And we can't forget the Galapagos Islands far off the Pacific coast, where unique island ecology and geology inspired Darwin's theory of evolution through natural selection. The islands have very small towns, with Puerto Baquerizo Moreno on San Cristobal Island serving as the provincial capital. So in this relatively small country, you can experience mountains, coastline, the Amazon, and the one-of-a-kind Galapagos, thanks to the diverse landscapes and ecosystems across Ecuador. Ecuador has a long and fascinating history, spanning indigenous cultures, Spanish conquest, and independence movements. The first major indigenous culture to develop in ancient Ecuador was the Valdivia, one of the oldest known cultures in South America, arising 3500 BCE on the Santa Elena Peninsula near the modern city of Guayaquil. They are known for their pottery and agricultural society. Later, the Inca Empire also expanded into what is now Ecuador in the mid-15th century, just a couple generations before the arrival of the Spanish. The Inca introduced Quechua as a common language and implemented their road system and administrative structures across the region. In 1534, the Spanish arrived in Ecuador, drawn by rumors of gold in the area. Led by Sebastián de Belalcazar, the Spanish forces were part of the conquest across the Inca Empire after Francisco Pizarro's invasion of Peru. Quiteño and Guayaquil origins date back to 1534 Spanish settlements. Ecuador was part of the Spanish Viceroyalty of New Granada for almost 300 years until declaring independence in 1820 behind liberation leaders like Simón Bolívar. Though it took over a decade of struggles before the Spanish forces were fully defeated in Ecuador by Antonio José de Sucre at the Battle of Pichincha in 1822. After independence, Ecuador was first part of Gran Colombia Union with Colombia and Venezuela before emerging as its own sovereign state in 1830. Over the next century, Ecuador saw political instability, liberal reforms, conservative rule, populism, military dictatorships, and rebuilding democracy. Today, Ecuador continues to develop both economically and socially from its diverse history 
blending indigenous peoples with Spanish, African, and other heritage. There is much more that could be said about this fascinating country. Let me know what you know about Ecuador's history in the comments. The population of Ecuador reflects its history as a blending of indigenous American cultures with Spanish colonial influence. Today, Ecuador is a largely mestizo nation with most people of mixed indigenous and European descent. The World Bank estimates that Ecuador's total population is about 18 million people. The largest ethnic group is the Mestizos, making up roughly 70% of Ecuadorians. They are a mix of native Amerindian and Spanish ancestry and culture predominant across most of the country. About 15 to 20% identify as indigenous or Amerindian many from groups like the Quichua in the Sierra Highlands. Several other Amazon Basin tribes like the Shua, Achua or Huaurani people live in the Oriente East. Around 7% identify as Afro-Ecuadorians with African heritage. Languages also reflect this Euro-indigenous fusion with Spanish as the official language spoken by over 90% of Ecuadorians. Quechua languages are the second most common, spoken by indigenous groups. There are several jungle languages of Amazon tribes in the Oriente region as well. Religion in Ecuador is mainly Roman Catholic Christianity, estimated at almost 80% of the population today. Indigenous peoples blended some native beliefs with Catholicism over the colonial era into forms of folk Catholicism. Ecuador has a developing economy that relies heavily on exporting oil and agricultural commodities. As of 2022, its GDP is around $115 billion, according to the World Bank. Oil accounts for over a third of export earnings and a quarter of public sector revenues for Ecuador. The country exited the OPEC oil cartel in 2020 under economic pressures exacerbated by the pandemic, but remains an important regional oil producer with the third largest reserves in South America. Beyond oil, Ecuador's other major exports are agricultural commodities and seafood. Bananas, cut flowers, cacao, coffee, shrimp and tuna are the main non-oil exports supporting the economy. Natural resource industries like mining, logging and fishing account for 6 to 8% of GDP, but face environmental scrutiny of their sustainability. Tourism centered around Ecuador's natural beauty, indigenous culture, and history continues to grow as the fifth largest source of foreign exchange income. The economic importance of the Galapagos Islands in particular leads Ecuador to invest heavily in preserving the fragile island ecosystems Ongoing economic policy reform focuses on reducing public debt, improving employment, addressing inequality, and diversifying the economy for sustained, inclusive growth across Ecuador. Ecuadorian cuisine is incredibly diverse, reflecting the country's varied geography and blending of indigenous cultures with Spanish colonial influences. Kicking off our list is a hearty potato soup known as Locro de Papa. Popular in the Andes Mountains, this soup features potatoes, cheese, cilantro, and achiote seasoning for a creamy, savory bite. The tangy cheese and potatoes make a perfect match. Cuyasado is an iconic Ecuadorian roasted guinea pig dish. While the idea of eating rodents may turn some people away, this Incan delicacy offers very flavorful meat if you're daring enough to try it. It's typically served whole and you nibble the meat right off the bones. Encebollado is a popular hangover cure and breakfast soup. Made with fresh tuna or albacore, it gets incredible flavor from sliced onions marinated in lime juice. The mix of seafood, chili spice and citrus makes this fish soup completely addicting. And the number one Ecuadorian food you must sample is freshly made ceviche. This national specialty 
uses raw seafood like fish, shrimp or octopus that gets cooked by marinating in lime and orange juice. Each region has its own spin, but the zesty citrus flavor paired with fresh catch can't be beaten. Ecuador has a rich cultural heritage stemming from its indigenous roots and Spanish colonialism. This fusion has produced captivating artistic traditions throughout its history. In visual arts, Ecuador is renowned for its colonial Baroque style of elaborate carved altars and architecture. The famed La Compañía Church in Quito's Old Town exhibits this ornate craftsmanship in its towering facade. Beyond colonial art, the 20th century saw the emergence of celebrated indigenous painters like Eduardo Kingman and Oswaldo Guayasamin. Ecuadorian literature arose alongside independence movements in the 1800s, led by statesmen like statesman Eugenio Espejo and Juan Montalvo, who used poetic essays to inspire nationalism. The nation would see its first novels in the early 1900th century as it developed its own literary voice. If you enjoyed this video on Ecuador, you'll love this next one.